All right, what we have here is a older Goodman. Um, she said it was put in like in 2001. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but I'll see. And some moisture down here. I think maybe the gasket behind her is leaking. Um, she said the burners have been replaced. Those I don't think are stainless steel. Uh, those look not too bad but it's already got a port for the Testo. And then I'll um, get some readings on that and see what I see. Yeah, it was installed in May of 2020 or 2020. So we're we're up there in age. This is a GM EC96, uh, 60,000, and this is actually a propane. So we'll see what we see and kind of go from there. All right. So this is my Testo 320LX. I've had this for oh, four or five years. I just had it uh, sent it to Testo, and I just had um, this all calibrated and everything. So we'll see how how it works. Propane. It's a zero and out. sensor it just fired up so I'll let it do its thing Oh, 
numbers are pretty high. We'll let that run for a few minutes and hopefully the CO starts dropping. Yep, I'm not a not a big fan on Goodman anymore. There's a lot of blackness. Some blackness in there. This install it's pretty typical. It's kind of kitty wampus. secondary in this because those numbers are pretty high. Alright, so now that we're in high fire, the O2 the CO is definitely going down. It just don't burn clean when it's in uh, that first stage for some reason. Yeah, now we're getting to be where we need to be. I guess it's been running for, I don't know, seven, eight minutes, something like that. So we're finally into high fire, that's good. Ideally with a high efficiency furnace we want to be below 100 parts per million in CO carbon monoxide. So we're finally getting where we need to be, that's good. Two's looking good. So we're burning a 90, 90 point or 95.1. Yeah, everything's looking good now. Had me concerned there for a minute. If we can get that number closer to zero, actually, that means it's clean burning, but with propane, it's, it's kind of hard to get those numbers. Yeah, she's burning okay. She's burning okay. Alright, I'm going to test flame sensor and all that stuff. Alright, I'm going to test the flame sensor current. Set that to UA, which is microamps. 
off. I'll clean the flame or the flame sensor with the right there, pull that out, clean that up with some uh, uh, emery cloth and then we'll put it back in and we'll get the numbers before and after. Alright, that was a pain trying to get that screw out back there because I try to use my small little bit here. I ended up finally using this thing to get that screw out, but basically um, it's not real bad. I'm going to use a piece of um, steel wool. You can use a dollar bill. I wouldn't use anything abrasive because it will it will scratch it too much and you'll get a lot of dirt build up on it once you scratch it. Then you got to replace the flame sensor. So yeah, it's not, like I said, it's not too dirty. There. You can see the blackness right there. So we'll put that back in and we'll retest. There. So obviously you want to one lead goes on the flame sensor. The other lead goes to this one. That goes back to the board. And we're reading zero now. We'll fire this thing back up and see where everything is. Take this trap out, clean it out. See the just light here. It's a lot of black in there, which is telling me that this possibly could have a, a secondary could be plugging up on it. But I'm gonna go upstairs and wash this. Maybe she's got a utility sink. I'm gonna wash that trap out and get her nice and clean. Pop this thing back in. A lot of blackness in there.
lighting's done. Flame sensor's done. Um, I'm going to look at these burners closely and make sure there's nothing goofy going on with those. see it's kind of hard to see here so this burner all the, way, all the way to the left do you see what I see a different angle here that crossover is up higher than the other one so I want to try to push that down see if that makes a difference it's lighting fine but those burners are so I'll, I'll quote her some stainless steel burners and that'll uh, take care okay, of the that was put in May of 2020 May 16th 2020 yep so here's here's the burners ma'am see how rusty those are yeah so that it's that's why it's burning the way it is. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get you a, a, an estimate on replacing these burners with stainless steel. Um, that may clean up the way it's burning, and I, I know it will clean up the way it should be burning blue and is burning yellow. Um, so that yeah, that's that's the reason why it's burning kind of dirty is because these burners are uh, aluminized steel. And you know what happens with aluminized steel when it gets wet and moisture, it starts rusting. So, but definitely on propane, stainless steel is the way to go. Yeah, because so, they've only been in here three years. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't take them long. Doesn't take them long. Now, is that quite a while when you're when you hear the furnace click on? But it takes it quite a while, it seems like, to actually come on, fire up, or whatever. No, I mean, think. there's, a, there's a, a, a time frame. I mean, it should be, as soon as that thermostat calls for heat, it should come on within, oh, 45 seconds, thereabouts. I mean, because it's got to go through the initial process of the... Yeah. Draft inducer comes on, then it makes sure the pressure switches are open and closed, all that stuff, and then then it ignites. But yeah, about 30 to 45 seconds, it should be coming on. Shouldn't take longer than that. Yeah, see all that part was that whole lower thing that you're working on. Yeah, this was, yeah, this is your this is your furnace. Was done, yeah. And uh this looks like the air conditioner was put in maybe in 19. Yeah. Yeah. That was about a year before yeah. the furnace. Yeah, that's even rusty. Quite 
quite a bit to them there, isn't it? Oh yeah, there, there's a lot to these furnaces for sure. My other house, the first house I lived in, it was all electric. Oh, I bet you that was expensive. <laughs> well, not as bad as you would think. Really? Back then, that was back a long time ago, back in the 70s. Yeah, and I'll try paying for it. <laughs> yeah, would be a lot. Uh-huh. But I never liked the idea of having... Well, then, when I lived in town before I came to the country, we had natural gas. Yep. But, uh... When this house was built, they put in propane. I've had to replace my heater already because it started leaking. Uh huh. But yeah, I had to have this put in this water system. Oh yeah. That was real expensive. I'm sure. So, because uh, our water is really bad. Stuff in it. Yeah, line. Yeah, so it's I was telling you about right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's oh, not yeah, leaking. I see a little rust there. Yeah, it's not leaking now, but a lot of times behind this draft and do through that seal, seal's not set or it's just rotten, but I mean, it's not that old of a furnace. Like I said, I've installed these in the past, especially after COVID, and it just, the, the quality control just went right down. Really? Yeah, so I, I stopped putting these in because I was having too many issues with them. And I don't like putting my name on stuff that has a lot of issues. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's why it was only 3000 Well, that's, that's about going price. I mean, uh, my equipment's a little bit more expensive. I mean, this is the cheaper, this is a, this is a Kia versus a, a Cadillac, you know, so. <laughs> in the car world. All right, other than that, everything looks okay. Uh, do you have a new filter? Yeah, I did. I always try to keep one ready. something up for the burners uh, replacing those with stainless steel and yeah if you guys got any value out of this content if you learned anything smash that thumbs up button and we'll see you on the next one